Hopefully you can hear our mics okay. And you're coming to us in the UK on a lovely, warm summer's Sunday evening, seven o'clock. And I want to talk you through some of the key tips I've found with my work and in my personal life of helping myself and others with a tight neck. Now, the really interesting thing about tight necks is that we often don't get symptoms and pain and issues or even noticing a different orientation of our necks. And yet we have other symptoms that we wouldn't necessarily connect with having a misaligned, i.e. a neck not quite in alignment. So I'm going to run through them with you. Very excited to do that. And I'll be having a look at the comments occasionally, just in case you want to ask any questions or give any comments or any shout outs. Hello, lovely to see you both. Oh, that's from Tally. Hello. Hello, Ronnie. Ronishi. Hello. Nice to talk to you. And I will be checking in with you, but also uh, first, before we start, you may have seen on some of my videos, I'll just put the camera down a bit, that we um, pick these lovely virtue reality cards. So, Jez, you haven't picked one this week. Have I a haven't. little delve. Okay. There we go. Integrity. Oh. Do you want to read that out? Well, okay. Should I put my glasses up? <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> my actions reflect what I value most. I am the same inside and out. You are. I think that means being in a genuine person. Integrity. Yeah. yeah so I people so. can rely on you. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, that's true for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's I think nice. so. Lovely. So there you go. Integrity. So that's going on the windowsill with all of my other clients' cards from this week. I've already picked mine, and mine was respectful, valuing the unique part of each person. I acknowledge even the smallest contribution. There you go. Yeah, and I very much respect. Actually, I was having a little chat with a client about this earlier in the week. I respect everything that lives, everything that has a life, be it a tree, a leaf, an insect, animals, humans. I really believe that everything has a right to be here and therefore I honour and try and create an abundance around that item, that, that living organism. Um, so I, I try and bring that into most of my life. And I, I think that's respectful as well, respectful of other mm -hmm. living things. Yeah. You know, what, yeah. everyone's had a different life. We've all come here from a different place. We've all got different histories. And it, it's nice for each of us to respect that different makeup that we have. We've all got different stories to tell. I find everyone interesting. Everyone has a story to tell. It's fascinating, this human life we're living. So I'm just going to check in with you. I've seen some comments flicking up. So shall I just move you so that you can see me looking at my computer screen? There you go, got my shorts on. So, ah, oh, here we are. Where are the comments? Are they underneath? Oh, I'm not sure how to find those comments, Jazz. Do you know how to find those? Uh, last time they were on the right-hand side. They're not there this time. No. Hmm. That will be annoying, won't it? Oh, what a shame. I mean, I can see them when they're flicking up onto the screen. I don't know if you want to have a little ha have a little look before mm. yeah, okay. you get into position so I can work on your neck. Yeah. And in the meantime, my lovelies, I will talk to you. Ah, oh, what a great philosophy. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, well, it's something we can all do, really. And um, I, I actually learnt this philosophy 
Although I think, I think it's in all of us, you know? Don't we all want to respect each other? Um, I learned this philosophy from a beautiful yoga and meditation organization called Drew Yoga. And they are based in the mountains of North Wales, but they, are, they do have a presence in most of the world. D-R-U, Drew Yoga. And they just are a, a charity and they have this beautiful philosophy of life that ev everything deserves to be here. And what they say is, uh, my philosophy on life is create no harm. So I try and live a life where nothing I do, none of my decisions, nothing I say will create harm elsewhere. Um, so I'm mainly vegan and I try and do my bit for the environment and sustainability. Um, I give blood and I try and give back. I volunteer quite a lot over the years. So if we're doing something in order, what they call to serve the community. Oh, I agree, just George. We should definitely respect one another. We should treat and love one another as we would like to be treated. The golden rule, yeah. So um, I, I do honour that in my life. And, you know, wouldn't it be nice to think that we could inspire others by doing that as well? Just by living that life, even without, like I am now, preaching about it. Oh, hello, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Um, so yeah, just by inspiring, just by living that life and others noticing you doing it in that way and then they want to be doing the same thing. Uh, no, you're not sure how to bring the comments up. They're, I can see them when they come up if I've got my glasses on. So yeah, we don't know how to get the comments up. We'll have to have a look at that. Your content, love your comments so much, your content, truly inspiring. Thank you very much. Oh, that's really nice. And and you know what? You guys inspire me because without you watching, I wouldn't be creating all of this content as well. So let's get down to treating a neck. And I have a lovely, willing volunteer standing right here. With a neck. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we've all got necks. But yeah, we've all got different health, health kind of necks. Now, what, what would you say about your neck? Do you have any issues with it? Just talk honestly. Um, I think occasionally uh, if, I, if I sleep really deep and I don't move around in the night, generally, yes, I can wake up with pains at the bottom of my neck, at the base of the neck, but I stretch them out and I do a bit of yoga and, and it tends to free it up. Okay. Um, overall, touch wood I'm very lucky I don't suffer too much um, but on occasion as you well know it gets a bit tight in the base of the neck and you free that up as well yeah so, so I presume you mean T1 so if you have a little feel of your neck right now you've got seven bones coming down the neck and then you've got a little bobbly bit here can you feel the bone that's sticking out? That's called your T1, thoracic one. I will show you. So I've got a little plastic skeleton behind you here. I can remember introducing this years ago on my YouTube channel. And we, we I think you guys decided to call it Skelly. So we've got Skelly here. So let's have a look at Skelly's neck. So this is the base of your head here, the occiput bone. Then you've got an absolute sliver of a bone here, which is C1. And isn't that amazing, that, that sliver there? It doesn't have a, a, a protruding out area. Can you see that? This, this doesn't protrude out. And that's what happens at the very top of your neck that this one is made in such a way which it, I'm going to give you a very fascinating piece of information now so you see the very base of the occiput there it's like a hollow that the bone goes quite thin and you've got a gap there and what can happen is 
for instance, with whiplash normally, so whiplash is when we have a sudden and drastic trauma to the neck where the neck or the head flicks all the way back, maybe with a car accident or other motor accident or with um, falling forwards and the, 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 the neck, uh, the head falls backwards. Other things I've found it with is um, children with trampolining and uh, sports injuries. And what happens is, in order not to decapitate the head, um, the body will go into survival mode and that sliver of a bone will stick underneath in that gully there of the occiput and the two will clamp together very tightly, almost like a, a fusion. And what this means is the head won't decapitate. It'll stay on the body or on the top of the spine because this little C1 has saved it. And then we've got C2, which is quite a knobbly one. You can probably locate it in your own neck right at the top. Then C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, again quite knobbly. But then you've got T1. Very useful and helpful. Thank you, George. Thank you for sharing it. And then this one is T1 here, which actually is the one that I just asked you to feel at the base of your necks. It's quite a knobbly one there. It sticks out somewhat because it's not only the fact it literally does stick out more from the spine, but also the orientation of the neck means that just as it gets to T1, that will protrude more because all of the other bones are actually leaning forwards. So most of us, the angle of our heads is leaning forwards. I'll put Skelly back. There we are. So I'm going to go run through a few points with you. So all about posture, first of all. A big reason why our necks have pain and symptoms and issues is actually because of the weight of the head. The head weighs 10 pounds on average. Now, 10 pounds, obviously it contains you probably don't want me to go into the details, but a, a lot of um, circulation and the brain, a lot of glands and the nerves, obviously a lot of bones, there are a lot of cranials in the head. And all of these together create a lot of weight. So let me show you how much 10 pounds weighs. If you'd like to sit here and hold your hands out, my lovely assistant. <laughs> Okay. Never hold know. I never know what's coming. No, no, I haven't told you anything no. that's going to happen. No. So just hold your hands out so that you can in the camera. A bit lower. Yeah. Ready? Oh, okay. Two pounds, four pounds. Have I got to balance these? Yeah. Okay. Are you, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Think so. Six pounds. Eight pounds. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that's two pounds. It's actually one. But so let's say that's double that. That is ten pounds. Mm. Are you okay there? Yeah, it's a good weight. Yeah. Can you see that in camera? There you go. Lift it up a bit. Is this is this hurting your neck? No, no, it's good. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> I can do this. So that is ten pounds. That's a hell of a lot. That's how much the head weighs. I'm taking it off you now. Now then, interesting fact. If we put our heads one inch tilted forwards, so let's have a look at the side of Jez's head. Okay, you look forward. Now, now most of us have got quite a rounded back and you probably think you're sitting up nice and straight and tall, don't you? I thought so. Yeah. So you probably are yeah, then. Yeah. yeah. So because actually when we're sitting up straight and tall, there is still some curvature to the spine and the rounded shoulders. OK, so th this is Jez's straight and you're, you've got your head and your neck nice and straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's a ruler. 
So from there to there is one inch. It's about two and a half centimeters. If you were to angle your head one inch forward, so keep going forwards, angle, angle, to about there, a little bit less than that, oh, a bit more, yeah. So that difference there, just of one inch, so from my thumb to where his head is now, going forward that much, puts another 10 pounds, i.e. it doubles the weight of the head. If you were to go three inches, hang on, so come up back nice and straight again. Okay, so keep going forwards, 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 as we do when we look at our phones. Right, now stop, that's three inches, okay. That is up to 40 pounds, depending on, you know, the, the weight of our body, the weight of our heads. You can come up again now. 40 pounds. So all of those bags of sugar were 10. Mm -hmm. Four times that. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine the weight on your neck of all of this excess uh, weight because of just leaning forward. And how often do we do that when we're on our phones and on screens? Mm. So that is why I thought I'd like to come to you today with some key tips. Oh, we've got 31 of you watching right now. Thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate it. And we're going to get on with treating Jez's neck now. So just going to have a little at my notes. So you may think, what are the symptoms of a, a head that's doing that and creating tightness in the neck? Well, actually, it might not be pain. Oh, hello. Still having trouble seeing the live chat. Maybe you could try opening a new tab on your computer. Have you tried that? I do you want to do it? But do you want to? I could do that if you were. Yeah, yeah, to I'm, talk. I'm, we're chatting, aren't we? We're yeah. chatting. So, what are the symptoms of a neck and a head that is doing that? Well, it's things like, and would you believe it? We're going to go through the physical ones first, but you won't believe the uh, psychological ones. We've got things like sinus issues because it's going to stop proper circulation to all the lovely sinus membranes in the forehead and the cheeks. It's going to, oh, bless you. Thank you, George. Um, and it's going to create headaches and migraines. And obviously, um, I treat quite a few people that come to me specifically because they get recurrent headaches. Um, they may not have a tight neck, but actually it's because there's impingement. So the muscle is too tight, it's, it's strained, it's in spasm. Perhaps there's impingement on the nerves and or impingement on the circulation. And obviously if there's impingement on the circulation, then that is going to stop blood flow. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm all about blood flow. In order to have health in our bodies, we need proper open motorways, all of this lovely circulation feeding our hips and our extremities, our neck and our head, our brain, and all of our vital organs. So headaches and migraines and other things like tinnitus. Now I treat tinnitus quite a lot. I've got tinnitus myself. And if I was to find a core practitioner, K-O-R-E, a core therapy practitioner near me, I would probably have a treatment every week in order to treat my tinnitus because I know that they'd give me a neck release and they'd work on my cranials. And that's most likely the main cause of tinnitus, which is the ringing in the ears. So other issues with sore necks are obviously pain and spasm, maybe a cricked neck. Um, and psychologically, you'd be looking at actually things like fear, anxiety, depression, um, insomnia. A key, key issue with insomnia is a tight neck because I'm going to show you how to use a pillow correctly at night which will help support your neck. Maybe you're doing it already and you need to be doing other things with your neck but I'm going to go through lots of tips for you. Just going to check my notes making sure I've got everything covered. And that worked. The, the chat is oh. now live, so thank you for that advice. Right, okay, let me have a look, see if I've missed anyone. Just put you down so that you can see me chatting with you. Look at this. Well, Catherine asked, 
What treatment is Lucky Jez getting tonight? Ah, does Lucky Jez know? No. Ah, oh, lovely. From Canada. Ah, oh, two people from Canada. Ah, oh, lovely. Oh, thank you, everybody. Right, only teardrops. <laughs> My posture's really bad. I hunch a lot. Uh, this can cause dizziness, lightheadedness, of course. Yes. I am very tall, over two metres. I don't know. Do you know how many two metres you are, Jess? Uh, well, I'm six foot one, so that's under, under two metres, isn't it? Mm, I'm not sure. Tell us. We don't know metres, do we? Uh, no, anyway, that's a good question. you're quite tall. I was going to mention that you're quite tall. Yeah, uh, I'm glad that was able to. Yeah, thank you for your advice, George. Okay, so I'm putting you up again, and we are going to. There we are. Hope that's not making you feel dizzy just watching a moving camera. Okay, so having looked at posture and symptoms, we're going to look at the solutions. Hi from the Netherlands, Ursula. Lovely, beautiful country. So um, let's, oh, what's my mic doing? There we are, it keeps misbehaving. Solutions, okay, so we need to lift. We need to lift because we don't want to concertina and compact the, the neck, we want to lift. So imagine, so the chin needs to be level. Quite often when we think about lifting, we lift the chin and obviously that's going to compress the back of the neck. You know, imagine we've got um, a ball on, on a tube there. If the ball is rotating like this, it's either going to compress the back, the front or one of the sides. We actually want to lift. So the chin needs to be level. In our yoga, it's all about level chin, isn't it? And then we need to lift the back. And it's really difficult to do it to yourself. How do you lift your head, especially with gravity opposing us? So we need someone else to do it for us. And you notice the, the, the spine comes with you. And I, is that hurting you at all? No, no, no. Not at all. And it is actually quite minimal. And yet that makes quite a big difference. And another, instead of lifting, another way we can take the, uh, create more space in the neck is actually inversion, i.e. going upside down. So I know you wouldn't want to go on your head, although that's a, another good yoga pose, a, a headstand or a, ne a neck stand, but actually to um, lie, on a couch or something, and then just let your head relax off the couch so that you've got that length. But obviously make sure you're not in any pain in any other area and you're not making it worse. But actually like, or, or even turn over upside down and let your head hang, whether, whether you'd be able to hold that for long, but maybe off a sofa would accommodate that for you. Okay, so inversion is really good. Just checking my notes. And um, another thing you can do is go and see a therapist. And what I would do if I was treating a neck is I would do a neck release, which is what I do with core therapy. And I'll be showing you that. I would do some cranial balancing to check out all the cranial bones and make sure they're aligned correctly. I would also do a TMJ release. The TMJ is the joint here, the temporomandibular joint, which is here. If you like, it's the jaw and it's where it connects the maxilla to the mandible the upper to the lower. So the mandible is the part of the head that moves up and down, the, the lower jaw. The maxilla, which is the bone that comes across you here. Thank you very much, only teardrops. Thank you, that's really kind. The maxilla comes across here and um, it's fixed to the rest of the head. So the maxilla doesn't move at all when we're eating. It's the mandible that comes up and down. And this hinge here accounts for a lot of issues with people. 
Oh, brilliant the way I'm explaining everything. Thank you, Gavins. So it's all about releasing this here. And I know some of you may have had pain with um, a TMJ, temporomandibular joint in the past. Some of us don't actually get a symptom there, but actually the neck can cause the TMJ and likewise the TMJ can cause a misaligned neck. So it's something as therapists we're always looking for. The other thing a therapist will do for you is a sternocleidomastoid release, which is in the sides of the neck. It's actually this muscle that swings round from behind the ear and forwards. And then we have uh, the trapezius muscle, which if you like to turn round for me. So the trapezius is a trapezium, so it's a diamond shape, and it comes up into the neck in this fashion, comes down underneath the deltoids, and then back down as a, a beautiful diamond shape there. So the trapezius is on the top, it's a superficial muscle, meaning on the top, of all of this beautiful shoulder area, and over the scapula, the shoulder blades, and then down to a point which goes underneath the latissimus dorsi. So this muscle, the trapezius, and the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is the one that wraps around the front here, are the ones that us therapists are mainly working with. There are um, muscles in layers underneath those superficial muscles as well, but these are the ones in massage and core therapy that we can grab hold of and release. We don't do much, well, we do do a little bit of grabbing, but um, it, it's not too painful and it's needed. So it's one of those kind of relieving kinds of pains, isn't it, Jez? It is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get to action. If you would like to, let's lie you down first of all, Jez. On my back. On your back. Yeah, I'm going to take this away and you're going to put your head directly on this cushion. Put you there, lovely. I might put you up a bit, that's it. How are you feeling? I'm great. Good. Always, always good in the boffy. Oh, a lot of people say they just come in here and instantly mm. just feel like a new person. It's a lovely space. What a lovely thing. Yeah. I should just let everyone just walk in for five minutes and then walk out again. They feel better, <laughs> even without me being here. So I'm just having a little feel, first of all of the very upper chest and along the clavicle, the collarbone here. Um, I've treated quite a few people with, who have had in the past broken collarbones. And uh, it's really interesting because they'll be like a knotted, like an overlapping bit of bone on a certain place where the bone has uh, knitted together again. Um, and it still works perfectly fine. In fact, my nephew broke his collarbone when he was born because he was such a big baby. So I think that's not common, but it does happen. Ah, oh, this might be a silly question, but are there any supplements or essential oils that are really good, beneficial for the neck? Yes, 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 yes. So um, essential oils in a massage, I would use ones like rosemary, which is stimulating to the blood circulation. I would use lavender, which is analgesic, which means pain relieving. And it's also um, antispasmodic, obviously. So uh, stopping any spasm and a strain. I would use ones like black pepper, which is very spicy and stimulating, very warming. And again, it's all about getting that blood moving. I would use, so I said rosemary, lavender, black pepper, and then maybe some of the calming anti-inflammatory ones like Roman chamomile or German chamomile, highly anti-inflammatory, because there might be 
a swelling there. You might not feel it yourself. And, you know, with joints, we feel uh, cellul cellulitis, like um, a, a swelling and fluid. But actually, when it's somewhere like the neck, you wouldn't necessarily feel a swelling. So I'm just having a little feel of the neck. You've seen me do this many times before. Can you see that okay? I'll move you slightly. <laughs> okay, so I'm using my hands in this fashion, like this, moving side to side. How's that feeling? Mm, it's a little sore on the, the top. Yeah. Top left. On the top left, I could feel that, yeah. So basically, where it's sore is where it isn't moving as fluidly and smoothly as the other sides. So this one, if you like, is a little stuck. Yeah. Um, so being tall, you obviously have a long neck, and I'm just about to show you a neck release. So having had a little feel, so I know what I'm working with, I then scoop my hands into a nice long line and I bring my finger ends in a long line just like that. Hopefully you can hear that cushion which makes nice little crinkly noises. So I'm coming up, scooting up, relax, relax, heavy, 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 heavy. And then I'm creating a line underneath the occiput. You know a few minutes ago when I showed you Skelly, I showed you the base of the occiput where it meets C1 and C2. That's where I am now. And a lot of us have had some kind of whiplash injury or um, scenario. And we may not have known it at the time, but our C1 may well be stuck under the occiput. And when the C1 gets stuck and almost fused to the occiput, it means we have far less mobility. It means when we do move our heads, there will be like um, a sound, there'll be crunching that you'll hear inside your head. It means that when you do um, go through life, you will be more prone to issues and other symptoms like headaches uh, and and um, fogginess, brain fog, um, l lack of clarity. So having held that for a few moments, I'm now going to pull just gently on the same place. So all we're trying to do as core therapists is create space, create that lovely freedom of movement and increased circulation to the head, to the neck, to the brain. So there's good circulation, i.e. blood circulation, so that's lymph and red blood cells, so that there's good nerve connectedness and messaging. So relax, relax, relax. We're just going to do that again, creating a line and up. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels... Be honest. It feels good. The um, It already feels like the top left has loosened. Ah, good. Yeah, because it was quite sore earlier. Mm. Mm. Okay. So just by creating space at the very top, eventually it will help all the way down in between each vertebra, all seven vertebra, as they go down to T1. So just extending it out again. Then I'm going to turn. So if you went to see a therapist, whether it's um, a massage therapist, a core therapy, or some other discipline of uh, a therapy that's rec been recommended to you that, that works with necks and heads, then they may do something like this. So I'm just having a little feel. You see I'm pushing on the actual spine sides at the moment, so I'm just seeing if there's some give, we've got some nice deep breathing going on here, that's good. Seeing if there's some give to each vertebra, bouncing them down and they should recoil back, that's what I want. I want a nice fluid bounce, lovely. And then I'm going to push the processes. 
So a spinal process is where you've got the vertebra in the centre here and then you've got these arms that come out sideways, left and right, um, just around the back of the neck, about that long, maybe one to two inches long. And I'm pushing each one while supporting the head. And you notice I've got the head in the air. I'm not letting it rest down because I want to feel what's going on in the head. And, and as soon as I know that if Jez were to rest his head down, he'd take ownership of his neck again, meaning that he'd reintroduce all the muscle contractions. And I don't want that to happen. I want to be able to manage the head and, and help release those muscle contractions. So I'm just doing exactly the same again this side because whatever we do one side, we need to do the other way. Oh, there's a plane going over. Just relax, relax. You feel okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. The other thing that a sore neck can do is it can create issues down the arms. As some, some of my clients have come in complaining of pins and needles or even numbness, either in one finger or multiple ends of fingers. Um, sometimes pain in the elbow. You've got a pain in your elbow at the moment, Jez, yeah, haven't you? Right elbow, yeah. Right elbow on the inside. Yeah. And it's very particular localised issue. And um, another core therapist and myself both think that it's actually the neck. Obviously, Jez is nice and tall. It's got a nice long neck. And it's all about posture making sure you've got the correct posture, don't put too much strain on your neck because of the tilt of your head. It's all about getting it treated, go and see a therapist if you can, or follow these tips I'm going to give you shortly of treating your own neck. So I'm going to show you what to do. So I'm just having a little feel here, stretching it out, yeah. So if this was a normal session, I'd probably spend maybe 10, 15 minutes just doing the neck release on Jez's neck, having already released the back, released the hips, because it's all tied in. Oh, hello. You do have to run some errands, but thank you very much. Thanks for joining. So I'm um, going to show you other ways of treating the neck now. So Jez, if you would like to sit up for me. With okay. my back to you? Or? That's fine now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, lovely. Okay, here we are. So, um, I might come to here. If you could move more that way. Lovely, yeah, we're both in shot. So, I have got here a little cup, which is called, I call it the domed cup, and it's very soft and squashy. It's like uh, made of silicon. Uh, it's very smooth on this opening side, really easy to use. Now, on my blurb section of this video, you'll see one of the, the first links is for the facial cupping site. It's called Serenity. And on there, you'll see a link to this, this domed cup. So by all means, go on there and have a little look at this. I know that this in the UK at the moment is about £14. Um, I think you can buy it anywhere. So by all means, do have a look for getting it exported or whether it's available in the US, it may well be. And this is a fantastic cup for giving yourself or someone else a wonderful treatment at home. Now I'm using Tropic Skincare Soothe the Senses Body Oil. And this has just the most glorious scent. It's very, a uh, relaxing scent. It's not what I call uh, stimulating, like the black pepper I was talking about earlier. And I'm just going to do it with your T-shirt on. Go over your neck here. 
and then down over T1 and the sides of your neck. I'm just going to wash my hands or wipe them off so I haven't got oil on my hands. And then I'm going to bring the cup into play. So I'm just going to create some stimulation to the whole neck at the moment. And you'll see how I'm using it. I'm just doing the, so that on the skin and then pulling off. On the skin and then pulling off. And you can see it's already creating some warmth. It's immediately that I pull the cup off, you can see some warmth there on the neck. So this is exactly what we want. We want some warmth there. We want the circulation to come and be our friend and help lighten and relieve any issues there. And then I'm going to do what we call moving cupping. So this is flash cupping and this is moving cupping. Lovely. So what this will do is create blood flow and relieve muscle spasm. And then as soon as the muscles stop spasming, they will allow good circulation to the head, the neck, the brain, but also help that nerve connectedness and the cerebral spinal fluid, the dural tube. So what happens with the dural tube, the cerebral spinal fluid that flows all the way around the outside of the brain, back down the spine and then back up again and round and just keeps going in a lovely long looped motorway, is that that cerebral spinal fluid at the C1 and occiput joint here can get impinged, trapped, uh, pushed. And when that happens, it means it creates things like high blood pressure, um, also headaches uh, and lack of ability to be able to think clearly. So um, I'm just creating that warmth here to help relieve the circulation, the nerves, the cerebral spinal fluid, and then that lovely moving cupping. Now this type of cupping, of course there's lots of different types of cupping because as you know I do fire cupping as well with glass cups, I do Korean cupping with hard plastic pump action cups and I do facial cupping which is similar to this, they're silicon cups but they are smaller. Oh, it smells lovely as well. That lovely soothe the senses is very calming. You'll sleep well tonight, Jezza. <laughs> <laughs> Always do. Ah. Oh. And then I'm just going to rock you a bit. Does that feel okay, me doing that? Yeah, it does. It's, it's a very gentle action, actually. Yeah? Shall yeah. I hold you in place? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what you could do if you had access to the whole back is cup here and then glide all the way down and off the shoulder. Cup here, hold it on, and then all the way down and off the shoulder. It's just a lovely feeling. Nice noises working really well. It's going nice and rosy as well, but in a good way. It's not making any marks. Beautiful, lovely. So I also want to show you what else you can do at home with some, some little tips. So while you're sitting there, Jez, hmm. I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I might apply to the neck 
in order to help any issues that I find there. So for, you want that up, do you? Or can oh, I put okay. it back down? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got some beautiful Forever Living Aloe Vera Jelly here. And again, there's a link just underneath in the blurb if you want to get some, use my website. I benefit from sales and appreciate it very much. So we've got some Aloe Vera Jelly here. And then I'm just going to apply it on this side of the neck. So how does that feel compared to how your neck is at the moment? Does that feel cool? It is cool. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how much warmth you've created with the cup. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the cooling aloe vera jelly on this side. Um, there's no particular scent to it. It just feels really cooling. And then on this side, I'm going to put this is Glucosamine Complex, and again, on my blurb, you'll see an Amazon link to the uh, Glucosamine Complex. Now, this is actually, again, a cooling gel, and it does contain aloe vera and devil's claw and MSM, which is from tree bark and found to be very relieving for any um, inflammation. And the cream with the glucosamine is actually more of a, a creamy look rather than a gel. And I'm going to apply this on the other side of his neck so that we've got a comparison there. And you can tell me how it feels compared to the left side. Yeah, it's certainly a little cooler. It's cooler, mm. is it? Yeah. And yet, did you tell me the other day that it has... Oh yes, it's got a scent, mm. hasn't it? It smells... It's almost like a, like a menthol, menthol type. Yes, it may well have menthol in there. So interestingly, it's got that cooling, but it, it smells sort of menthol spicy at the same time. Mm. Um, so that's on this side. You've got the aloe vera jelly on this side. So you've got a choice there. Uh, the glucosamine isn't vegan. Uh, glucosamine is from fish oil. So it depends if you're okay with using things like this. And uh, I really think that the glucosamine has had a good success rate with a lot of my clients so far. They've used it on things like uh, inflamed joints, like knees, feet, ankles, hands, uh, RSI, repetitive strain injury, and even on necks. So give it a try and see what you think about, um, but I, I would give it several goes. So use it, what have I said to you? I mean, there's no maximum with this. So we've got it in the kitchen and you, or I encourage you to put it on. Just every time I think about every it. Every really. time you think about it, yeah. Okay, so I think we're nearing finishing the tips. There's one other thing I wanted to tell you about that you could do at home. I'm just having a little tidy up here. And that is this really interesting thing. Now, if you'd like to lie back down, Jez, yep. I'm going to move the camera. On my back again. On your back again. I don't know if you've ever done this thing that I'm going to help you with now. <laughs> Bless you, you don't know what's coming mm. from one minute to the next, yeah, do you? That's great. <laughs> it's interesting that that is getting cooler now. The glucosamine. The glucosamine mm. one is, is in a nice way? Yeah, or? yeah no, in a nice way. The, the yeah. aloe vera has uh, levelled out. Okay, I'm just moving you up a bit. There we are. So this is something called a still point inducer. And I use this when I have a sore neck and no one to relieve it for me. So you might be in that position. Uh, this is what it looks like. Careful. <laughs> and I'm going to put it underneath the head, but quite high up. And of course, because you've got cream on, it's going to move. Oh, no, actually, it's doing OK. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it slipping a bit or is it OK? okay. And what this does it, is it actually works on that dural tube I was talking about, which is the cerebral spinal fluid that comes all the way up the, the spine, around the brain and back down again. And what this does is like setting the reset button and it will help the pulse of the cerebral spinal fluid to come back 
to a balanced um, and beautiful rhythmic pulse. So there should be a beautiful pulse, and we're all different, just like uh, the pulse in our circulatory system. There should be a beautiful pulse to the cerebral spinal fluid, which will be about between uh, once every five and 10 seconds, there will be a pulse. So it, it could be faster or slower um, for all of us. And sometimes it's not rhythmic. It's not at a, a regular pace. Sometimes it's a little bit irregular. And what this does is it resets it. And that will help the neck as well because of the shape of this particular still point inducer. And I know with my meditations, I meditate every morning, that in order to find that still point, so that is that lovely place that we find ourselves deep inside where you feel safe and secure, it's essential for the cerebral spinal fluid to be in that beautiful rhythmic and regular rhythm. So this is what this does. And what it says on the pack is to actually use this as often as you can, maybe for 10, 15 minutes and to lie here for 10, 15 minutes in, in this fashion. So tell me, how does it feel, Jez? Again, it's, um, it's incredibly relaxing. Is it? Because it's, it's actually tilting my head back slightly. Yes. Um, which is obviously what you did with the neck release. That's right. Exactly. But I could easily stay here for 10, 15 minutes. Really? No problem at all. Ah, well, that, that, that's what it would do. So if you're suffering with a headache or something, get one of these things. I haven't got a link on my page, but see if you can find one. Maybe I'll try and find a link for you guys. Um, and have a go with it. Try it every day and work on preventing those headaches rather than trying to get rid of them when they do come. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and maybe I need you to sit up again. Mm -hmm. You don't want to come off this, do you? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. One last thing. I keep thinking of things that I can help you guys with. I've got 36 people watching at the moment. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Is... You didn't bring your phone in in the end, did you? No. Right. Imagine... This glucosamine is your phone. I know it's not the right shape, but imagine that's your phone, okay? We're, I'm gonna put you here. You're seeing the whole bothy today, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is you with your phone. Yeah. Right, if you were looking at your phone or texting, hang on, I think you need, I need that so I can see all of you now. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. If you were reading your phone, texting or whatever, what, honestly, what, what would you be doing? That's about, yeah. That's about right. I'd probably, so, I might even slump a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. So look at the angle of the neck. After what I said earlier about an inch forward is an extra 10 pounds of weight on top of your already 10 pound weighted head so that's 20 pounds and that's probably more than one inch we're probably talking two inches there so that's 20 pounds extra of weight on top of your 10 pound head now how about if you were to get your phone in your hand and put your elbow on your body instead of having it next to your body put your elbow on your body or even two elbows if you need two hands two elbows and then support your forearms from, from your body. So you're using your arm as a lever here, like a tripod for a camera, rather than the whole weight coming from your neck. Because when you're holding something in your arm, and of course, if it's in the front of us, it weighs far heavier, then we're actually supporting that weight from the neck. So put the elbow in front of you, one or two elbows, and then imagine you're looking or texting. Mm. Now, I know it's a bit of an odd, and you will get used to it, but that is so much better. And what happens then is it raises the phone, and we're looking forwards instead of down, like this. So it raises the head up. 
Can you imagine doing that? See, yeah? And then support your elbows mm. here, yeah? You'd have to get used to it, but it's... You'd have to get it, used to it. But it you, would be better. And you'd be texting for less. So, you know, you'd be on your phone for less because you'd be thinking, that's not completely com comfortable, so I need to put my arms down now because you can feel the weight in your mm. arms rather than the weight on your neck. Yeah. Um, so just another thing to think about if you've got any other suggestions for not looking down Then please do share them in the chat um, Be careful also when you're walking obviously we look at our feet a lot pavements countryside wherever we are We're looking at our feet and that is a tilted forward head as well It's going to put so much strain on the neck. So look forwards always have an idea It's almost like peripheral vision looking down, but look forward and look up you know like I did the neck release and tilted your head back it's good to look up as well and by doing that we immediately separate the shoulders and put the sternum forward that is so much better for us than than hunching forwards um, and, and creating this uh, compaction at the front here we want space yeah and round the arch around the shoulders back so I'm just going to check my notes, but I think we have covered everything on this live feed. Okay. Ah, sleep. Don't want to miss that. So that's the last thing to cover. I think I've said that before, haven't I? So can you lie down again, Jezza? Okay. And I'm going to get a pillow. This isn't any special pillow, it's just a normal pillow. Now, sorry about the noise of the chair. A lot of people sleep like this. So, Jez's head is on the pillow and his neck isn't. I don't know if you can see that there. So move the t-shirt a little, move you guys, you harmonies. Yeah, so the neck isn't. So what I always say to people, I always do this with my clients, if raise the head up, bring it in almost underneath your shoulders as well and then put it down. It's so much nicer for the neck to be supported by the pillow as well as the head. I always see the neck as scaffolding and the scaffolding is holding up this huge, very heavy, very important part of the body and the scaffolding should also be supported, otherwise it's going to collapse. We don't want a sagging neck because that's going to cause lots of neck spasm. We want that lovely, long, strong neck to be supported by the pillow as well as the head. And then whether you're on, on your side, or, do you want to turn on your side and show the same yeah, pillow? Which Would which you one? like to turn to the camera? Can do. I won't actually fall asleep. Yeah, so what I do then is I lift the pillow and I put the pillow here. So actually the shoulder is reachable here and I bring the pillow right in like this and, and yet the neck has plenty of pillow as well. So how does that feel like oh, that? That's great. Yeah, and if you've got too much pillow, just push it down a bit here so you can breathe okay. Um, and, and that is so much better for the neck. So. Try that at home. It might help with insomnia. It might help with neck issues or even hips and other joints. And let us know. Do get back to us in the chat. And I'm going to have a little look at your chat now to see if there's anything else I need to be replying. Let's have a little chat with you, see what's going on here. You can see, I can see myself on here. So, ah. Uh, Ooh, self-treatment, can't wait. Uh, do you have to use oil? Ah, you mean with this, Karen? Yes, so you really need oil with this. If you don't, it won't work. It, it won't grip and you definitely won't be able to do the moving cupping. Now, there is an oil that comes with this cup. Have a look at the website. It's called Prickly Pear Seed Oil. It's the the oil with the most amount of vitamin E in, so it's absolutely fantastic. 
or use the one from Tropic, which is that lovely Soothe the Senses. It Honestly, you won't believe the scent. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, very soothing, very sleep inducing. It's absolutely gorgeous. So uh, just bought one, can't wait to try it. Thank you, how many times a week? So if you mean the cup, uh, every day if you like, there's no maximum, no minimum, it's just whatever to fit in with your daily life. If you're talking about the glucosamine, then put it on as often as you like, definitely daily. Uh, the same for the aloe vera jelly, it's only natural, so, um, so as much as you like. So yeah, lots of tips there. Um, so good, let's just see if there's anything else before I say goodbye to you lovely people. Uh, only teardrops. When I move my neck left or right towards my shoulders, I hear lots of clicks. Oh. I need to see a therapist or a chiropractor, but, but didn't do anything. Um, yeah, and also you did ask about supplements. Well, this does contain glucosamine, so that is one of the best um, supplements for a tight neck. However, I'm vegan, so I would use a vegan omega oil, which I actually take, uh, I ingest it rather than smooth it on. Um, so you can get that from BioCare, and I do have a BioCare 10% off link. And I believe I've put it in my about section on my channel homepage. Um, or else if it's not there, message me and I will get it put on here for you. But uh, Jazz, come down here so we can both say goodbye. <laughs> here we are. It's not just your neck on, you see. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for joining. We've just gone over the hour. Oh, Larry, thank you very much. That's really kind of you. Love my channel. And it's been lovely bringing you this lovely video tonight. It's really warm here in the Bothy. We probably look a bit warm, no, it's, don't it's, we? It's coolish, yeah. but uh, we are in the middle of a heat wave, so. Uh, yeah, we are, aren't we? Yeah. yeah, I think it's changing tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but lovely, have a lovely rest of your Sunday evening or wherever you are in the world, whatever time of day it is. Spread a little healing, lovely harmonies, and see you again soon. Thank you so much for your support. It does mean a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So, I see you again another time. Lots of love. Bye.